Good morning, good morning, good morning, YouTube viewers. Good morning, Facebook Nation. Good morning to all people, all colors, all races around the world, men, women, children. Good morning. May you have the most beautiful day. May you have the best day. May you continue to be the best person that you can be. And for whatever goals that you have set forth for yourself on this day, as long as it benefits all of humankind, may those goals come to fruition. So we're going to get right into it. I want to say thank you to everyone, you know, over the holiday. And uh, since we're coming up, you know, on the, the new year, I have to get with this. And you should as well. This is a video that you should share because this video is entitled Racism. What's the solution? Revolution. So today we're going to expose the black where you, most people use to put the end, uh, the end with followed by the A, the nigga. We're going to talk about the ER. So this is to the black ER, N, R, E, R. So it's to you who this video is to because you are gatekeepers and we as black people, we don't need gatekeepers and we need to expose gatekeepers, not only to expose them in the coming year, this is where change begins. We often think that we have to go up against an oppressor, but our oppressor is the gatekeepers that are the ones that are intentionally holding us down, the ones that sell out to us. And I want to send a special shout out to a, a female with the initials of MP. So if you're watching this, Think about what they did to your people in Haiti. And over three years ago, I said that this is what they would do. And you work for these people. And you are a gatekeeper. You tried to oppress me. So how do you feel about that? So now, anytime that I see you, I'm looking at you to see what they did to your people who fought for their freedom. And then they sat there over the news and sat there and called them a broke country, a country that can never rise up, a people that are hopeless. I keep on being a gatekeeper. So it's to people like that. Also, people within my own family. And I want to start out like this. There's, there's different stories that I'm going to tell you about where I came from, and this is how I qualify. So let's just get right into it. I just had to put that out there for you, Miss MP, because you sat there and you tried to sound so intelligent, but you're ignorant and you're dumber than a bag of nails. And most people say that you shouldn't talk to women, you should have respect. No, that's not a woman. That's an oppressor, a person who, who hates her own skin to oppress people of her own skin. So she is not even a human being, and this is how we need to look at people who are the ER instead of the A word at the end of the N word. So... These are the gatekeepers of today. And the benefits of, of, of today we're talking about the benefits of world racism. So this is really a, a, a topic to say, I agree with racism. I agree completely. And I'm gonna explain to you why. And the people who don't agree with gay, uh, racism, they're gatekeepers. Because anytime you want interaction between races, it's not racism is something that most people get confused. This is why I say we need to understand what words mean and how they're applied. Racism does not mean that you hate a person of a different color. And I'm going to take you directly to a, 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 a situation that took place in one small town, but it made world news. I was a part of it. And today's, uh, today's video is dedicated, dedicated to John Anthony Ray, rest in peace, who was my cousin. He is the one who I stood, as a 15-year-old boy, I stood beside him. And he set up a riot that went worldwide, made world news made every news station from a little small town and it all started out with a racist act so we're gonna we're gonna get into this today so there's a benefit to, to world racism in that all black nations all black nations and all black people must set aside their beliefs their religion and their differences around the world around every part of this globe around the world or we divide it we will continue to suffer what gives me the right to say what I say is this Within my school records, you will see Caddy School. And over here is my where my high school completion, it was part of my transcripts. And you'll see Caddy School. Caddy School is a, a school for boys, literally a prison, which you would consider today. At the age of 11 years old, racism was real. When I was young, when I was, uh, when I was around five or six years old, I still remember the stores we used to go into and they used to have uh, chains where it said whites only, not to cross the, the line. So I remember that. So when they say that slavery is gone, that's bull, bull shit straight bullshit. You know, a lot of our history has been covered up by black gatekeepers. People who go out, people who claim the cloth, claim religion, and they're lying out their teeth. You know, and this is why in this event that I'm getting ready to explain what took place is why they, Jesse Jackson was around, Al Sharpton was around, but we wouldn't let them into our small town because we didn't want Jesus. We wanted a revolution. And we knew that those gatekeepers were coming in here to, to, to pacify people instead of getting things done. And we got things done because from that point forward, these people had to move to another town. They didn't come back. They didn't come back and set up shop. So this is when the time there was a loyalty that was amongst us. Now we have gatekeepers to infiltrate us. And those gatekeepers come in all different colors. I have someone really, really, really close who spent six months around me who was a gatekeeper. 
So, you know, these people think that you're dumb. They don't respect you as a person. They look at you as a cattle or, or, or an animal or a pet. But then when you flip the script on them and you show them those cowards run and they run and they hide. So bring gatekeepers. I love them. I eat them up all day. I eat them up all day because they don't have intelligence to think for themselves. And they go according to what they're told. But then they come out looking like crap. So let me get back to when I was 11 years old. 11 years old, racism was where a white person, if they decided that they wanted to smack you, if you came into their store and they smacked you, same thing happens now. You call the police and the police do nothing about it. They sit back and tell you, well, maybe you don't need to go into that store. Same thing that they told me when somebody smeared bird crap, which was this past year, all over my car and sat there and laughed in my face. So times haven't changed, and we can't sit back and think that times have changed. Times will never change until revolution, until you sit back and you unite with your own. But we, as a black people, got too many cowards running through us. We got cowards where we can sit there, we could pull a gun against one another. We could sit there, we could throw our fists against one another. I get more, I get more pushback from my own people than I do from anyone else, any other race. And that's the crazy thing about us. So we gotta stop, we gotta confront these people who are hiding behind religion. We gotta cast these people out who are gatekeepers, you know, holding and, and oppressing us and thinking that they can speak for us. We have to turn around and put these people on front street. But yet and still, you have content creators out here who got these big platforms and they hide, they play the game. And they sit there to be pro, 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 pro people. But you will still sit there and tell your followers to sit there and say, oh, well, look at what this person said and look at what that person, tell, tell your people stop watching them. I don't watch them. I don't watch people like Stephen A. Smith. I don't, I don't, I don't watch people like uh, 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 Don Lehman. I don't watch any of them, fair use. But I don't watch none of them because they don't represent us. They got this female who's a black woman. She's in the BBC. And she goes around all around the world sitting here trying to you know, belittle and get people to you know, feel a certain kind of way. But I'm glad for the president of Barbados who put that witch in her place. You know what I'm saying? Where she went to Barbados and sat there. But I'm not using that video. I'm staying with the topic because this event I was involved in personally so to get back to my story at 11 years old i'm going to the store with my friends and the people are bringing a pinball machine into uh into the store the man turns around and says get away from that door we're going into the store get away from the door nigger so we stood by the door you know what i'm saying who, who are you to call you know we live here you know this is the store we come to every day you know what i'm saying who, what gives you the right to call the nigger long story short the man grabs me by my throat 11 years old 11 year old kid grown man choking me saying niggers deserve to die choking me holding me up with two hands, choking me, and I, I passed out, came back, passed out, and the dude was trying to kill me. A person came by who happened to be black, he happened to be a little bit older, and he hit the guy. But I can remember what went through my head. I said, if I live through this, I'm gonna kill him. So when, when he got hit, I, he dropped me, I saw a bottle on the ground, I broke it, and I gut him. I cut him straight down, straight down, 11 years old. So. I understand what racism is, and I understand the severity of racism and how racism is and how racism is what they really, really want from us. They want you dead. They don't want to be your gatekeeper. So I believe in racism. Things should be separate. Now, fast forward. I end up, they, because I'm 11 years old, when this happens, they have to wait one year. One year they have to wait, and they waited. Instead of sitting back and, and saying, you know, this is what happened, where you got many witnesses to say what happened, they said, no, we have to wait until he's 12 years old so we can lock him up. And that's exactly what they did. They locked me up. Now, fast forward, two years later, three, yeah, two years later, now I'm coming on the age of 15. Two, two men get killed by an off-duty police officer in Meriden, Connecticut. And this is, this is the Klan rally. What you see is the, the, the grand, grand Wizard, the, one, the Grand Wizard worldwide, was in our small town trying to promote, to protect. And if you look, that's the, the front steps are City Hall. So now, they're sitting there and, you know, they're protecting the cop, which the cop didn't face no criminal charge. None. Even though he was off duty and it was a cold-blooded murder, faced no charges whatsoever. Matter of fact, he was allowed to go to Texas, if you read the article, where he ended up killing again. So, thank you. See how it works? One hand helping the other. We're not going to charge you. Just go down to Texas and kill some more for us. So now, I'm in Long Lane. When my cousin tells me what happens with, you know, this person and that the, the Klan was coming to Meriden, Connecticut, I escaped. I ran from there. So as you see, my transcripts say where I was during that time. So I ran from there because all they had was a, a fence. But they had security. That's a different story because I had encounters with that as well. But um, I get to Meriden, and it's like the night before the, the rally. And if you look at the picture, you'll see it's coming up a hill. So the hill that you're seeing, the hill that you're seeing in this photograph right here, where it's showing the cars going up the hill, 
that's where the Klan was, right there at the street Fort Song, and that's where they held that rally. Now, as they go up that hill, there's a gauntlet, and if you look on that hill, you see the person in the front. That's where they, after they, the first time, when you know they were, we were, everybody was chanting, "What's the solution? Revolution." That's when they got scared, and that's when they bought. The, they had to bring them into City Hall, so they thought that everybody would leave and everything like that. But at the same time, they did it on a day that there was going to be a parade, so they had to come. There was only one way out, and it was through that gauntlet. And my cousin was like, "Look, everybody, come up here. Let's get on the hill, so that when these people come through this hill, we're gonna give, we're gonna give them no way out. This is what they wanted, and this is what they feel about us. Then this is what we need to do." So, when you see the, the person the, that's standing in the front with the hood, that's moving. That's not Bill Wilkinson. That is not the Imperial Wizard. That was a woman who had that, that hood on. So my cousin runs down from the gauntlet. So where these get, you got these people on this side and you can't see this side, but you see the, the, the policeman in the front. Now that's a woman. We didn't know that that was a woman. My cousin ran down the hill. I ran down with them and then the hill started to collapse in on them. Bust, bust, the, you know, bust the person with the mask in the face. And then that was it. All hell broke loose. But the thing that I'm trying to say from this is you had black leaders that were there at the time that they tried to bring in gatekeepers. Meriden didn't want that. And what Meriden did want was a group that did come. And uh, how many of people out there, you talk about, you know, you know your history, you know, you know, people sit back, you know, you can tell us everything about the Bible. You can tell us everything about like certain books that, that, that they gave us that you know about that you grew up on. And I can't do that. I can't sit back and say that a slave document is something that I'm going to sit back and hold as truth is, is this is God because my God loves all people. But my God is also says that if you're being done wrong to, then you need to set aside your belief system and deal with the fact that we're humans first, which is what Martin Luther King did and which is what Malcolm X, Malcolm X did. All these other black gatekeepers that, that branched off from them, they were all gatekeepers, and this is why they were still alive and profited today. Because if you tell the truth and you stand for, for what's real for your people, you will die or you will be in prison. So when, to go back, how many people have heard of ICAR? No, nobody has. Nobody has heard of ICAR. Most of the people are out, of, out of New York City, and it's out of New York City, and it's an international committee against racism. And these people were worldwide. Why nobody heard about them? So these people came, and this is when people cared about one another. So these people came from all over to, to, to help us. And one of the places, if you read the article, was Westport, Connecticut. Westport, Connecticut, which is one of the wealthiest cities in, in, in Connecticut. No, one of the wealthiest cities in the world. One of the wealthiest cities in the world. Forget about Connecticut came and were arrested for this fight. So it's to say that it wasn't a black and white thing. It was a thing to say, hey, this is wrong and we don't want this. You know, it's okay to be racist. It's okay to be separate, but it's not okay to impose a will on a people who want the same thing. So when you look at places like Black Wall Street and Black Wall Street was saying, hey, we're going to set up our own economy. Now, for the white people who wanted to be separate, they said, no, we don't want them to make money. So you're not a racist. You're an extremist. And for that, you deserve death. But, you know, people these days are mixing racism with extremism. And this is what we have to counteract because this is all worldwide. And, you know, for us as black people, we are not waking up. We sit back and we say, oh, we, we, we Protestant, um, we Baptist, we that, we that. And, oh, wow, Jesus is coming. Jesus is going to do it. Man, get out of here. That's weak. That's weak. You know, that's gatekeeper mentality right there. So this happened in July uh, 1981. So today's quote is, what's the solution? Revolution. And that comes from the International Committee Against Racism. And you say to yourself, what happened to them? Gatekeepers came in, offered them lots of money, and those are the people that you find leaders in your community today and politicians as well. So this is how they work. If they can't, change, if they can't flip you, they kill you. If they can't pay you, then they incarcerate you. So this is how it works. Um, but I want to get into something far more deeper. And that is uh, the Imperial Wizard. And his name is Bill Wilkinson of the KKK. So. They found Bill Wilkinson 30 years later, now being 40 years, and he lives in Belize. You would think, Belize? That's, isn't that black? Isn't that black? Belize? You're talking about the imperial wizard of the KKK is living in Belize with, with the majority in black government. So you have to say to yourself, why? Because Bill Wilkinson said something in this interview that is so key to what we face in the world today, and we as black people, if we don't wake up, then we stay ignorant. Then what we get, we deserve. Now, what he said was, he said, I'm not racist. And most people would say, oh, well, Bill Wilkinson, you are racist. You know, look at what you're part of. And I say, no, Bill Wilkinson, just like a lot of these white people that are out here, they're not racist. What they are is they believe in segregation. What they believe in is separatism. And what he believes in is what's based in the Bible. And this is what he said. He said, I, and I'm quoting him, I'm just a Bible crashing segregationist. God's people 
the Canaanites, God's people, the, the, the Babylonians, God's people, um, the, the, the people down the street, God's people, the bad people, God's people, the blue people. Everything is separate in that Bible. Everything is separate in these religions. All man-made religion, all these doctrines, everything is separate. So they're not, they're, when you talk to the average, take for instance the average white housewife who, who has a home, the soccer mom, and she says, you know, she's the nicest person in the world. But then she says, you know, well, I believe that, you know, people should date within their own race. What are you going to look and say she's a racist? I want to date in my own race. But we've, our race has been collapsed because we got so many gatekeepers. We're the only race that has these gatekeepers. And, well, it's South America. i got to give you credit because South America is breaking out of it. They're like, we don't even want you here. And also, big ups to uh, Ethiopia who told the United Nations, get the fuck out of our, our country. But yet and still, we look at everything that they put on the news to banish these people. So we're going to get back to... to, to, uh, to um, Bill Wilkinson, the imperial wizard of the KKK, and that's worldwide. He was the leader worldwide during his time, and he made it to come to Meriden for, for this event. But then they asked him 30 years later. So if this wasn't an important time in history, why would they find, ask him about that specific incident? KKK was doing a lot of things at that time, but this was specific because this was the first time the Klan was challenged by black people. They were challenged by people, and they won. But yet and still, they don't have that in our history books. How many people have read about that? You know, but it's right here in print. And this should be in every history book. But anytime we accomplish something as a black people, they bury it. Just like they buried our connection to the pyramids, to the Mayan pyramids, and to Globy Techie, and to all these other ancient structures that we've built. So this is what we you know, this is what the gatekeepers are doing. So this is why this video is for, for those gatekeepers. Because you're the most evil people. And for you to be the most evil people, that's where the war begins. By by cutting you out and not giving you any kind of platform for you to sit back and for you to spin that, that dry stuff. You go to you spin it to your oppressors. And I bet you, I can guarantee you, just like Bill Cosby, that once the people stop listening to you, then you'll find out exactly what you are and who you are. But to get back and end this with Bill Wilkinson. Bill Wilkinson, he is exactly what we all need to be. We don't need someone to be our gatekeeper. We don't need someone to tell us how we think. We don't need that. We need to build our own economy. We need to pool our money. We need to get out of these religious structures. We need to get away from this, these political people that sit there and are supposed to speak for us in our communities. And we need to put, set aside everything and get back to what's our own. And I want to leave you with this. When you look at your globe, you look at your globe, your kids going to school and they look at the world globe. Do you know that every one of these continents are enlarged so that it makes it look like Africa is equal to all of them? When Africa is such a huge continent, it out blows away everything. If they were to make a map of what Africa actually looks like, the rest of the world would look like little pebbles on a dot. You see one big huge landmass and all these little dots. So this is how deep they take this brainwashing. This is how deep they take that manipulation. And for us as a people, if we don't wake up, then we lost. And for the people that I send this video out to, there's a person and his name is John. So I'm going to send this and I'm saying this, John. Nobody else knows this, but this video is going to you. I, w I grew up with you, John. You know what I'm saying? We used to go over to one another's house, and we, we grew up in a neighborhood where everyone is there. And you grew up to be this racist, racist person that I can't even believe. It's almost like you made my childhood look like a lie. And this is what gatekeepers do. They don't mind destroying your life and then sit there to, to act one way in front of you. And these gatekeepers and that, John, you're still around black people. You don't like black people, and you're still around them. And it's, some of them are my family members. And that's the sad part about it. And that's why I don't really deal with them either. But I'm sending them this video so that they can send it to you. And if you ever see me somewhere, then this is what you need to address one way or another. So this year coming, people wake up and stand up because we're human. And when you have people that are sitting by you looking at you as less than human, when they themselves are dumber than a bag of nails, then you got the problem. And you should be proud of your color. I would rather be no other color because we've been here from the beginning. And our history has been stolen from the beginning and rewritten from the beginning. But I refuse to pass that on to my children. I refuse to pass that on to my son. And I refuse to become part of that system. I would rather die first. So thank you and big ups to all the people, the content creators, that you know, you're starting to expose this stuff for what it is. You're standing your ground and you're willing to lay down your life and your freedom for it. You know, we have to fight for our own because like I said, there's too many people, too many weak, weak people that share this skin. Weak that share this skin and they hide. So New Year's coming and New Year's coming, there's new things coming. And what's the solution? That everyone, men, women, children around the world, be proud of who you are. 
hold on to your culture. Don't let these gatekeepers come into your country. Don't let them come into your homes. Don't let them come into your circles and infiltrate. And the ones that do, cast them out. They said, conform or be cast out. That's the, the quote that I'm ending with because they're telling you the truth. This is the world we live in. And with that, everyone, have the most beautiful day. Have a blessed day. And with that, everyone, men, women, children, peace and blessings.